Mike. Good morning, Rachel. Hello. We've just been to Parkrun. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. But cold. 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 And um, Martin's at work. Yes. I've got no commitments at home, apart from the cleaning. And um, not I just sort of said to Rachel this morning, I've had a thought for the way home, you know. <laughs> and she looked at me it was and a said, terrible thought. You know, but you yes. guessed it, didn't you? You you got you guessed it straight away. Yes. You did. Yes. So she's gone around partner and totally excited and giddy because we are going so fast <laughs> to get there even faster, but yes. I didn't run any faster. We're going to go to Walton's. Walton's. <laughs> so totally unexpected, looking totally grim, we are going to take you to Walton's. Yes, not been for ages, it was uh, for at least four or five months. Yeah. And the reason that we are going to Walton's is really very straightforward is that Clumber Park lies just off the A1 and Walton's is in a little village called Goldthorpe which is off the A1. So a minor detour home. It's, it, it's easier to go now than to go at another time. As a separate trip. As yeah. a separate trip. Definitely. So I'm going to sign off and um, we will see you, we'll see you at Walton's. Bye. Welcome to Walton's, Rachel. She's off. What have you found? What's that, my dear? What have you found? I'm just, I'm just nosing, just nosing. Oh my gosh! I'm taking a big, deep breath before I do anything else. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's so full. 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 What's that you found? Cord. Cord. Six pound a meter. Look at these. Are these power, like power nets and things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, they've got the two, three, um... Is that a new one? Oh, they've got that one. I like that one. What's that? It's one of the two. It's it not great quality though, look, because they. So that is my little Walton's back there. Somehow I managed to spend more money than I intended. But over here, just over there, is Rachel's Walton's bag. And this is Jane. Hello, Jane. Can I put you on my vlog? <laughs> Look at this. Diets. But how much do you think she's got in there, uh, Jane? She's got quite a lot in there, hasn't she? Oh, look at that, Rachel. That is definitely what you would call a fabric haul. But you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for you. It's <laughs> all your fault. Apparently, I'm stood here in the shop taking the blame for everything. <clears throat> but it's been absolutely lovely in here this morning. The house, the shop is absolutely buzzing. It's just off the, it's between the M1 and the A1 in Goldthorpe. It's so friendly and just a lovely place to have come to as a special treat. Hello there everybody. So I did my hair, straightened it, made it look nice and thought, oh, the rain stopped. I'll go out for a quick walk. Ha <laughs> ha, fail of epic precautions, proportions, because I've gone out and the rain is now catching me up. But I really don't mind. Uh, it's only a very quick shower. I can see it. Can I go behind me? Can you see it? Go on because it's a, a rough field. Uh, it wouldn't be, and it's not going to be long before one of them flushes out a deer or a hare. That's what usually happens, and they're going to chase it. And Poppy thinks she's a deer, she's going crazy at the moment. I'd love to be able to film her, but she's so far in the distance. It's one of the lovely things about coming out when it's the weather's a bit like it is now, you get nature at its best, and there's a rainbow coming. I'm just going to hold the camera still for a minute and see if we can see more and more of it. It's really good down there by the trees. I'll have a look on my... Uh, hold on a minute, I'm about to get mown down. See if the fast dog's going to go straight down. Are you going straight down? You need not. There's the 
rainbow coming. It might come a little bit stronger. I'm here. Water, water. The noise in the background is bird scarers because the farmers have planted their crops. So they have these bird scarers. Scare the birds off from eating the seeds. You gonna go back in? I don't go much further than this because they don't need it actually. It's, they need the walk, they need the exercise, they need to gallop and this is the most fantastic field. It's, um, there's the, vill the village is over there in the distance. Um, into the sunshine is the village um, and Poppy is there. And all of us you'll see in a minute is just the ears going up. This looks like a deer. Can you see them over there? There's Maggie. And Poppy is, I can hear her, oh there she is. You might just see how much the cousin is Here she comes. Can you see her jumping? She looks like a deer and the ears fly up. You know, you're going to go back. Isn't it lovely? I just love watching the dogs run. And then when I get home, I am going to uh, film my plans for the next few weeks. We enjoyed that little walk that we had down by the beck with the dogs. It's just been such a lovely autumnal afternoon. I really wanted to share that with you. But as this vlog started with Rachel and I going on a spontaneous trip to Walton's, I thought I ought to show you what I've been buying in Walton's. So I have my Walton's blue bag here. I haven't even unpacked it yet. The nice thing is that they do write out exactly what it is that you've bought. So I'm going to go through it in sort of semi-reverse order. With what it is that I need to use first. It's a very sparkly lycra. It's a four way stretch and I'm going to make some running leggings. Um, I've got my 100th park run in four weeks time and I thought sparkly leggings for my 100th park run. But I've also got here some really soft cotton jersey and the aim with the soft cotton jersey is to make a top to go with this. And whether it's a simple running vest or a long sleeved top, I really don't know. I have no idea which patterns I'd like. They've got to be got done in October because my 100 because my 100th park run is on the 30th of October. Now, I've got some power net because Rachel and I have suddenly gone into knicker making and I wondered whether I could try putting a bit of power net on the inside of the knickers to um, help pull myself in. I'm allowed to, I'm nearly 60. And I've also got, because they had the most amazing Christmas fabrics, look at this. Christmas Lycra for Christmas running leggings. My son-in-law saw that yesterday and said he will be disowning me at Parkrun. It's fine, I can wear it to school as well. Now, got some cotton jersey, simply because it was there and it's a really pretty cotton jersey. It's floral. I'll probably get some kind of t-shirt out of it. I would like to do the Anne Kiddiles Sablon top. I'll put a picture in just there. It's the one I did for So Yellow for Endo. It's beautiful and I could do that with it. I could do the Atelier Brunette Le Sweat with it in the t-shirt style, make it a little bit tighter. It would be lovely, but I think I might go for the Sablon top in that one. And I've got some jersey just to make knickers with a remnant, just a flower, sorry, flower, just cloud jersey. There you go, really simple. And somewhere there should be knicker elastic. Knicker elastic is here. I have got more, I've got um, a cream pico edge. I've got this rather fancy one here, which I thought would be quite nice as well. I don't mind what colors go on what. Now the other thing I've got is some very nice silk and rayon taffeta. Uh, because I've suddenly decided orange suits me. I seem to be buying everything in corally orange peachy colours. It's got that on the other side now. 
Has anybody seen the challenge? It was on Instagram, something like sew your birth year. And I did show you these two patterns earlier. It's the Butterick 6318. And it claims to have been a 1961 pattern. I'm a 1961. I've also got this one, which I do like. This is Simplicity 8591. But it does claim to be early 60s. And look, there's the original. Can you see that? Is that not just beautiful? So I could make this top, but I think I'm going to go for the Butterick. And you see this one here where you've got the contrasting on the waistband? So I thought I would do the dress in the orange, but I can also have the contrast of the pink on the waistband there because it picks out the slub inside there. When you get to Walton's, as I showed you earlier on, it is an Aladdin's cave. It's got everything. Um, I've seen other vloggers. Jess put one about a fabric shop that her partner had taken her to, which was another Aladdin's cave. We keep going and going and going and finding all this beautiful fabric. And Walton's is located, for anybody that is interested or passing, if you're going north up the A1, you come off at junction 37. Junction 37 and you take the A635 towards the village of Goldthorpe and if you're on the M1 you come off towards Barnsley. I think you'll find it's the same A road, the 635, and it, it, it sits between the two. It's just an Aladdin's cave, there's no online presence for it. Um, I think there's a Facebook page but don't quote me on that one, Rachel would put me right probably in the comments below. So I had already got some fabric to make the dress for my birthday, but I thought actually this is more appropriate because in the 1960s, in the early 60s, everything was still a bit bouffante and had structure and the skirts were made out of these silky fabrics and because it's got like a sticky outy skirt, I thought mm, this would be right. And it does actually say broadcloth, linen, gingham, linen and taffeta. So it's perfect, taffeta. I think this one might say taffeta as well. This one is dupion. There's been a couple of new issues, which I thought, ooh, I quite fancy that. Now, the first thing I bought was, I bought something from a company called So Much More. I will put them in my description box. This is Jess at So Much More, and she's a small sewing business. And I have bought Teardrops on Navy, soft shell shower proof fleece now is that not just gorgeous now it's raincoat material and i've wanted to do a raincoat or a shower proof coat for quite some time but i've never seen this and i did see it on instagram stories and you can see there i've got the light on that it's got a lovely fleece on the inside now it's a i've never seen fabric like this come up on Instagram. I've seen it in shops and thought, oh, I don't need it now and I don't need it now, but I thought I really would like to make the coat, a coat with it. Now I have got a pattern ready for it. I have bought the Carillo jacket by Maison Ford because I just want to do things that are a little bit different. And as I mentioned uh, on my vlog for this Atelier Brunette top, I am doing French. I've, got, I've signed up to one of these apps that you can get. There's loads available. So I'm going to do this jacket. It does not require lining and this material does not require neatening. So it should be a fairly straightforward make and I'd like to try and make that this month simply because it's an exciting make to make. So that's one make. Two makes. Two makes because we've got the birthday make. Now quick update I mentioned to you that I called in at Bugweeds and I found this this beautiful um, raspberry colored or claret colored needle cord and I'm going to make with that and again it'll be in the description box below the Coralie Biasson Astrid jumpsuit and I'm going to take it over can you see those line drawings I've got them close in focus I'm just going to try and zoom in to see if it takes the whole screen watching that I'm going to hold it there for a few seconds so that you can see it there you go I'm going to do this one here with the longer sleeves and I believe that that would be a beautiful make for work that is probably going to be my next make but I'll explain 
why it's not a straightaway make. Now the other thing I want to do this month is to make another jumpsuit because on this birthday I'm being taken out, I believe she says with all her fingers crossed, to the Ivy for brunch. My brother won't even tell me what's happening and he's usually quite good at telling me what's going on. So when Maison Fauve released their new fabric, I couldn't resist it, could I? There you go. It's just a viscose twill. It's gold and navy. It's hard to decide whether it's got a leopard print inspired design or floral, because look there, I always thought that looked a bit floral, but then you can see from a distance it could be a bit of a leopard print one. Whatever it is, it's sophisticated and French. And on that note, I'm going to stop for a minute because my battery is flashing. Oh, I've got my camera battery back. So going on with the fabric I've just shown you, I shall put it over my shoulder there like that. There you can see it. I am going to make the Faye from Maison Fauve. Let me hold that up there. Now, Faye is one of their new collection. They've brought out four new patterns. Let me hold this up and see if I can get the line drawings in for you. And it's rather clever. I'm going to do the jumpsuit, but what is clever about this is that it's got a top that sort of hangs loose and swishes, and underneath it's got like a vest, but the top is attached to the vest, so and it hangs loose, so it's sort of like a loose layer over the top, so it looks like it could be a blouse and trousers that you're wearing, but actually you're wearing an all-in-one. So I have brought that, but in this new collection that they've brought out, um, there, their instructions have changed. And I'm just going to turn it over to this last page here. And on one side, they're in English. And the other side, they're in French. So here, you're assembling your jute pantalon. And here, you're assembling your trousers. So if you buy one of these patterns, you can rest assured now that they're in English. I also know that some companies in the UK are stocking them. Fabric Godmother are... Um, selling them. I don't know if they're selling the new ones or whether they're selling the old ones. And um, there is another French pattern house that's doing a release very soon, and that's Apolline Patterns. I'll put it in the description box below. And they were the ones that made the Monica dress that I wore for Hannah's wedding. So those are the three, four garments that I would like to try and finish this month. I have to do the Maison Fauve and the Butterick. I have to do those. I would love to do the jumpsuit, the Coralie Biasson Astrid jumpsuit because I've had it for a while and I know I could do with wearing that to work. Um, the coat would be a blessing if I can. Now, the other thing that I want to make more of are the Paper Theory Patterns Stevie Knickers. If you saw Rachel's Coffee and a Catch-Up vlog that she brought out a few days ago, yes, we made knickers. We're going to make bras next, I think, but we have made knickers. So I want to make more of these knickers if I have time. I also bought one of the piece of fabric at Walton's and it's a blush. I have no idea what it is. It's like a funny, feelsy sort of a ribbony type thing. And it's a very baby pink color. It was 150 a meter. But I am in the middle of making a Zadie jumpsuit. Here it is. I have got the Zadie bug. I've made an orange one. <laughs> Me and the orange fabric. Um, and this one is made in cobalt blue linen that I bought from Atelier Brunet probably about two years ago. It was certainly pre-lockdown one. Here it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I bought some cobalt canopy, canopy binding to go around the edge because I bound the pockets and thought oh that looks rather nice so I've bound it around the edge but then I thought I really want to wear it in the winter to school now I know I can put tights on underneath but I can make um a little sort of tank top not a tank top like a, a, a very simple woven top to go underneath it and this believe it or not picks up virtually the blush color it, it matches it matches in quite well with that baby, with that blue. So that's another thing that I'd like to get done, but it's not essential. But before I start any of those projects, I've got something else here next to me. How many of us have got UFOs, unfinished objects? 
because I seem to gather them. And I've decided that before I do any of this lovely new sewing, I'm going to tackle these. And that day Zadie jumpsuit is going to be finished. That is tonight's job. I'm not going to finish it tonight when I get it. It's set up, ready to go. Now, I'm a bit of a devil when it comes to sewing because I will line up the jobs. I will sit in the living room and I will pin and tack a whole load of things and bring them back through to the sewing machine, whiz them through, and then take them all back to prep the next bit. That's how I work. I'm mad. I know that. But I have got two Breton tops to finish. They're going to be finished. I've got a pair of flint culottes to finish. Next bag, that can go there. With my little blue plastic to do boxes. And this, now this is a garment, I'm not even going to show you what's in here because I'm so embarrassed, that I started when I was a stone and a half lighter. I was talking to Rachel about this as we were driving to Park Run yesterday and I said, you know, I'm going to finish this. And I know it's not going to fit me. It's going to be a goal to get down to it. I'm going to finish it. Now my next vlog will be the UFOs because I really want to get those done. And my aim is to get the UFOs done by Thursday. That's my aim. I'm gonna to have to put a little bit of pressure on myself here because as we get closer to what we call our half term winter break, autumn break, I will need to be making those two garments for the end of October. Three garments, because I think I might have to make some running gear as well, but I'm rather hoping that Rachel might help me out with that because I still am I think we all have our strengths in sewing and whilst I'm quite I'm very comfortable to work with with knits my heart is really in the woven the hand sewing the fine dressmaking with the woven fabrics but I am not going to be defeated with the stretches and I'm much much happier working with stretch than I ever was and I'm, the knickers, not a problem. Tops like this, not a problem. With the running gear, I am hitting a bit of a brick wall with. Um, and it's a bit of a self-challenge and there's nothing wrong with having the self-challenge. So as I tidy up the mess I've made that you can't see, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Um, thank you ever so much for the wonderful comments that I get. Do, if you've liked my vlog, give me a like, subscribe. And I'm going to try and be a little bit more proactive. I've got a few other things that I want to need, well, that I want to, that I need to get on with. And that is thinking forward towards Christmas makes, what I want to make for Christmas. I'm going to have to go a long way to beat last year's Vlogmas. I've got, I've got a couple of ideas. I've got a couple of ideas going around in my head. So I'll have to wait and see which one comes out. It won't be, one will be this year and one will be the next, will be next year because I've got the other idea that I had last year that I've still not done. Um, time will tell. So for now, I'll see you all very soon and take care and have a lovely week. See you now. Bye bye.